You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me here on our Training Thursday show. Actually, today I just got finished up with a meeting with our personal training team. I always really enjoy getting to sit down with them. There are some amazing personal trainers, amazing health coaches, really, I think, redefining the industry in terms of what it means to be a personal trainer. I really believe in the next five or 10 years, you're going to see a morphine from personal trainers into more of health coaches with more of a background in nutrition and exercise physiology and just kind of an overall background in the ability to be able to help people transform their life beyond just their body. I really think that trying to just transform your body is becoming more of a superficial based goal that less and less people have if it doesn't come along with also transforming their mind and body in terms of their overall health. So in the meeting today, we spoke about thyroid, we spoke about the adrenals. I mean, these are not normal questions for personal trainers to be talking about, meaning that I really believe that there's a lot of personal trainers out there, not all I know, but there's a lot of personal trainers out there who are just so dedicated to their craft and so dedicated to their clients that they're doing hours of research on their own and they're looking to go above and beyond. So the questions I got were, you know, how do you know when it's right for a client to do more cardio without them burning out? How do you know when it's right for them to do some fasting? How do you know when it's right for them to do six days a week of exercise instead of just four? And so what I want to do is I just want to share that topic with you today, meaning that if I'm teaching it to my team, you know, why wouldn't I teach it to you? And I know that there's a lot of people out there struggling with transforming their body. They might be struggling with weight loss based issues or just, you know, struggling in general in terms of kind of that get up and go and that energy and that zest. And there's also a lot of people listening right now who are personal trainers and they are health coaches. So let's give everyone a little bit of ammo that they can use so that the next time they get asked this question or for themselves as well, they're able to help out a friend, help out a client, help out themselves because that's really what this is all about. It's painted forward to each individual. I love the quote that anything that you're trying to achieve for yourself, try to do that for others. You know, try to just help someone else out. So here's the thing. It's really hard to just give all for one answers. And that's why when you listen to the Cabral concept, hopefully what I'm doing is giving you a little bit of context so that you know when this answer is right for each person. So for example, one of the things I want to talk about today is that we're looking right now into a new month. So we're looking into November as a fresh start, meaning that I think November 1st was just yesterday. So when we look at that, we say, okay, my favorite thing is this is a new month. This is a new start. Let's start fresh. Let's start a new way of thinking of things as well, a new way of goal setting, a new way of goal achievement. And you really have to start becoming a little bit more self-aware. So that means this is understanding your body and what it needs. So when I'm talking about helping people transform their body, I like to use this thing called the hamster wheel analogy, meaning that there are some people, they're called ectomorphs or the Vata body type, where their hamster, meaning like they're proverbial hamster, I guess, inside of themselves, it's never off the wheel. Meaning like even when they're seated, that hamster inside of them is just spinning and running around in that wheel. Their metabolism is always up. It's always elevated. And then there are other people who are more like the endomorph or the kapha body type. And their hamster gets off the wheel and it likes to take frequent naps. It likes to take, you know, long, long, you know, sluggish breaks. It likes to you know, have a little extra to eat at a meal, any of these things that are just more comfort-based, more relaxing. And this is part of our genetics. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. There is no good or bad. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand is that it's all good. You just have to know your genetics, know your genotype, and then know how to balance it. That's really all what it's about. So it gives context though to how much should you exercise? How much do you need to move your body? How many calories can you take in? Because when you're the ectomorph, You have to understand, since your hamster is always spinning in that wheel, you don't need to do a lot of out, like hard outward exercise. You actually need to do more calming of the body, more hatha yoga, 
more Tai Chi, more Qigong, more gentle stretching, more body weight exercises rather than really crushing the body with boot camp type workouts. In the long run, you might want to do that because psychologically you're amped up as well, but physiologically your body's going to burn out. And I work with a lot of CrossFit athletes and I work with a lot of athletes in general. Amazing people, they really are. But once we start lab testing, once we do that adrenal and hormone lab test, or we do the thyroid adrenal and hormone lab test, also called the weight loss test, that really gives people some insight into what they're doing to their body. Is it correct for them or is it not? And what I'll tell you is this, is that the Vata body type just burns out much, much easier. So the endomorph, now if you're asking the question for the endomorph, is they can do more for their body. They can actually work out at least once a day, sometimes even a little bit more. And I'll get into those specific workouts in a moment. And the reason they can do that is because internally their metabolism isn't as revved up. Their metabolism is a little bit more sluggish. They're in more of that parasympathetic nervous system. Now, again, there's huge benefits to that, which I do want to speak about in a moment. And when it comes to nutrition, this Vata body type, this ectomorph body type, which if you're wondering, is characterized more by the thinner joints, thinner wrists, longer slender neck, longer face, very thin ankles. They have very thin calves, almost non-existent, and they're thin in general. Now, they can put on body fat. They can put on body fat, especially around their waist and their stomach because of cortisol dysregulation, because of blood sugar issues, because of many different issues as well. Just because you're a vata or ectomorph doesn't mean you can't put on body fat, but a lot of that has to do with stress and improper living as well, lack of sleep. And the endomorph, though, they're going to be characterized by thicker joints, kind of more of a rounder head, shorter neck. They're going to have a more robust torso. They're going to have larger calves, typically just you know a larger, thicker individual. But it doesn't mean that they're necessarily overweight. It just means that their body type is just a little bit more robust. So you have to keep in mind that body type's just more anabolic and the ectomorph is more catabolic. I, I will get into this much, much more in depth in the future. And in 2018, I'll be doing tutorial videos on all of these things as well, because it is my mission. It is my goal to be able to share these things, which no one speaks about in the United States. Now, of course, they do speak about it in other countries and they speak about it when you're learning Ayurveda in India and Sri Lanka, but not so much in the United States. And of course, the UK, Australia, Canada, all the other industrialized parts of the world like, world like Europe. So And then again, that's why we're not always better. And I I certainly don't think that at all. So the endomorph though, since they're a little bit more sluggish, it makes sense why someone who's a woman that's 5'6 and 180 pounds, and she's an endomorph, and another woman who's 5'6 and 120 pounds, and the 5'6, 120, 120 pounder can eat 3,000 calories a day. And the 5'6, 180 pounder, both the same height, but different weights, she can only eat 15, 1,600 calories a day. Why? One, the thinner one, their metabolism is elevated internally, naturally. And the endomorph, their metabolism is just a little bit more sluggish. So what are calories used for? Well, they're used for energy expenditure. And since the endomorph is not expending as much energy naturally, except for their workouts and activity, well, then they're going to need to consume less calories. Hopefully this starts to make sense because again, this is not taught in personal training uh, school. It's not taught in naturopathic doctoral school. It's not taught anywhere. They do teach you about basal metabolic rate. That's for sure. That's definitely taught and resting metabolic rate. However, those are more complicated. They're not complicated, but they're not widely used except for maybe a registered dietitian or nutritionist, which is great to use. But again, very, very faulty because you're using a breath-based test. There's many different tests. And the truth is that it really needs to look at both genotype, what you are naturally, your genetics, and then phenotype, what you become. Because maybe as an endomorph, you're too thin. Or maybe as an ectomorph, you've actually gained a little bit too much weight for your frame. So here's what we have to do, is we need to assess where are we at right now? If we have a thin body, thin joints, naturally thin, hard to gain weight, well then we don't want to over-exercise and we don't want to go too low carb and we certainly don't want to be keto and we don't want to do too much cardio. Why? All of those are catabolic stressors in the body when what we're really looking to do is become more anabolic. So believe it or not, we actually want what's called an anti-vata or anti-ectomorph lifestyle. And we want to be more pro-kapha, do more kapha-based things. And that typically includes a little bit more rest or restful-based activities or soft exercise like the hatha yoga. And we want to do a little bit more like starches or heavier warming foods that will help to be a little bit more anabolic on our body. Now, for the endomorph, the thicker body type or the more robust body type or the body type that sometimes does gain a little bit of weight, Well, for them, what we want to do is more of an anti-kapha, anti-endomorph, more of a vata-based plan, which means more movement, more exercise, and using a little bit, and I'm going to talk about this in just a moment, more of a bit of a thermogenic-based process. Okay, so since this really is looking to transform the body, what I want to talk about right now is focus back more on that body type that's looking to lose weight. All right, 
So since we're looking at a body type that is more metabolically sluggish, what I want to do is this. I want to give you how to boost your metabolism. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your 10,000 steps per day. Why 10,000 per day? It just simply means you were less sedentary that day, that you were walking for at least an hour and a half during that day. That's about 10,000 steps is about 100 minutes. That's just a little over an hour and a half of being on your feet and walking. That's the minimum. Do make sure you hit 10,000 steps every day. Do try to walk to work. Walk your dog. Just get outside. More movement. Exercise or just walk during lunch. I do want you to exercise on a near daily basis. That could be a combination of resistance training, intervals, or cardio. All of them work great. Just keep in mind that your resistance training really should be more metabolic-based and not heavy, heavy strength training at a lower rep range. And the reason is this. Simply, you're an anabolic body type, and you're going to be able to put on muscle pretty easily. Okay, I want you to eat more thermogenic-based foods. That means that the quality of your food matters. I want you to make sure that you're eating two to three cups of vegetables per meal. That's at lunch and dinner. You can certainly do a smoothie for breakfast. You might be okay with an intermittent fast. And I want you then to have a handful of protein, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, whatever works for you. And I want you just to add a little bit of fat. So maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons of avocado or a little bit of olive oil. Now, here's one of the secrets though. I want you to add some heat to your meals. And even your smoothie should add some ginger to it or some cayenne. Your juices can have cayenne and only vegetable juices, no fruit juice. So now your meals though, add some cayenne pepper, add black pepper. And why does this matter? When I was over in India and I learned these little secrets, they were giving people, we actually made these capsules. It was amazing. We sat there, I was in the back room for hours a day, rolling these little tablets. Now we made them from actual, for this body type, we made them with a little bit of ghee or a little bit of raw honey. And we use that as a transport system to get the heating herbs like mustard seed and cayenne and black pepper and this product we called Turkatu into people who needed to lose weight. And we had them take that basically three times per day. And these were very, very hot heating herbs. And they would take it basically mid-meal. Now, it would help with digestion. It would lower levels of mucus and congestion, which the kapha body type of the endomorph typically gets. And it would help speed up their metabolism. Amazing, amazing. There's a lot of research on this as well. But I would work with people in the clinic and I'd be talking with them and you know working with them. And I would actually see them sweating. Now, yes, it was hot but they were sweating more than typical. And they would ask, is this normal? And I said, yes, it's because we're using these heating herbs and it's almost like you're exercising is boosting the metabolism. Really, really fantastic and, and inexpensive to do and very, very good for your health. So that was amazing. And the other thing is, I want you to understand that you should keep your body moving really as much as you can. I want you to really try to go to bed by 10 and wake up by 536. Obviously, you're going to be living a good, healthy lifestyle that you're going to be reducing stress, but you need to you need to get this body, which is a little bit more sluggish moving. So first thing in the morning, I love the endomorph to do some body weight exercises or sun salutations at a little bit faster pace, or I like them to do jumpy jacks or a little bit of interval. This doesn't count as their workout. It just counts as them revving up that engine to start the day. Now, I'm only talking five minutes or 10 minutes, that's it. But that's going to actually help bring down glucose levels, which is oftentimes higher in the endomorph body type or those looking to lose weight. And it will give you a little boost. It will give you a little dopamine boost as well. So get rid of some of that sluggishness, a little bit of norepinephrine to start your day, which is always nice. So these things are so helpful and they really are. And so what I want to teach and really just preach in general is that people start being a little kinder to themselves. You know, like you have to understand that we're just not all built the same. And the endomorph body type, which is just the larger calves, kind of rounder face, easier to put on weight, or they kind of look like they haven't taken off the baby weight sometimes. These aren't bad things. They're nothing to like, I don't know, there's nothing to like make fun of or, or you know, like anything like that. That's just not the case. It is important to maintain a healthy weight. And I really hope that you listened to yesterday's podcast. If you didn't, please do tune back into that. But what I'm saying is this, is we need to be a little kinder to ourselves. That from a genetic standpoint, we're all built a little bit differently, but we can all have the absolute best body for us. Not the best body for anyone else, but the best body for us. And the best body for us is a healthy body. And yesterday I talked about BMI and I talked about waist hip ratio and all of those things matter. Literally like you don't need to be stick thin. I want people to stop wanting to be stick thin. It's not healthy. And I want you to just look fit. That's it. So I want you to look fit for you. And there's beauty in every body type. There's beauty in the endomorph body type. There's beauty in the pitta body type. And there's beauty in the vata body type. The vata body type isn't going to have the curves or the robustness of the endomorph. And sometimes they're jealous of that. And the endomorph is sometimes jealous of the vata body type that they're thin and they can eat whatever they want. And the pitta body type, which we haven't talked about as much, they're able to put on more muscles. So a lot of types are envious of them as well. 
Now, of course, you can also be a combination of all three of these body types, and that's possible. So what I'm really talking about is where you're at today. So if you're an endomorph, your body is a little sluggish, you're looking to burn a little bit more body fat, I do recommend almost every day doing some type of exercise. I do recommend getting a little bit more in a morning routine. I do recommend a little bit more thermogenic food, such as protein at each meal. Just keep in mind that it does burn about 26 calories or more of every calorie of protein that you're putting in your body. You put in 100 calories of protein, your body's burning up at least 25 of those. Whereas with fat and protein, it's only burning up about five to six of those. So, you know, just keep in mind that matters. Like all of this matters to boost the metabolism. I've spoken about this in depth in the past. So I do hope that you'll, you'll tune into those previous wellness and weight loss Wednesdays and training Thursdays to get more depth, to get more context on this. And this, again, keep in mind, this topic is something that I'm going to speak about more in the future because it isn't taught in medical school. It's not taught in naturopathic school. And unless you're studying Ayurvedic medicine or really going in depth on body types and genetics and genotypes, it's difficult to find out. So if you do want to find out, if you want to find out kind of where your hormones are at right now so that you don't overdo it, whether you're an endomorph or any of the other body types, is I would run a weight loss test or I, the same exact name for this test is the thyroid plus adrenal plus hormone test. It's an amazing lab. It's going to give you your thyroid. It's going to give you your insulin. It's going to give you vitamin D, I believe. It's going to give you your cortisol throughout the day to show your energy output. And then it will show your estrogen and progesterone levels, which sometimes gets off in women you know, as well, and that has to be rebalanced. That will show your DHEA and testosterone, both great for burning body fat as well. Can't recommend that lab enough. It's an amazing lab, and I run it all the time in my practice. Keep in mind that when you do run any lab, I personally review those results that are ordered on our website. And then one of my amazing team members, health coaches, that are also nutritionists and registered dietitians, take you through those recommendations and wellness plan. Amazing stuff. So that will give you your phenotype of what you are today. And then your genotype is something that you can measure through your genetics. And your genetic test can actually be done. We'll link that up in today's show notes as well. So simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 636 for all of today's show notes. Thank you so much for tuning into another Cabral Concepts. And I look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.